Okay, so this is gonna be a demonstration of the BESC tool app to show all the functionality while connected to the skateboard. Um, so I'm just gonna go through each piece. There's quite a bit, but I'll try and move quickly. Okay, so opening the app, the first thing it's gonna do is scan for any Bluetooth low energy devices around. Um, you can set these devices as preferred if they're something that you connect to regularly. You can also change the name of the Bluetooth device um, the app interacts with uh, open source VESC based motor controllers. There's many different companies that make uh, controllers based on this open source firmware. So we're done scanning. We don't have to wait for that. We can hit connect. It's going to connect to the device and then drop us into this menu. There's two side drawers in the app. There's this one where um, this is kind of more of just like the licensing and general information about the app. There's some settings here. These can be tested and uh, you don't need to be connected to a board, but um, all of this just changes kind of like app wide settings here. Uh, there's a right hand drawer and this is where you can scan the CAN bus. The CAN bus is just a data bus that collects all the different devices within your electric vehicle. The VESCs are used within many different platforms, electric scooters, electric bikes, electric skateboards, robots, etc. Here you can see we have three devices listed. We have uh, the two motor controllers for each motor and the uh, BMS, which is the battery management system that watches the battery and uh, just looks at all the settings there and stuff. Okay, so first up we have the disconnect button, which brings you back to this drawer and disconnects the device. We can connect again. Next up we have the VESC remote quick pair. This is the only hardware that I don't have here right now to demo, but basically I would turn the remote on while this timer was running and that would um, connect the device. And um, this has been, this works great on all the other platforms. So I'm not concerned about that command getting through. Um, next up we have this setup motors wizard. So first off, it's gonna ask you to load the default parameters of the motor. Um, it's gonna start loading those. Then once it's done, it will drop you into this menu you can um, choose what type of vehicle you're using, propeller, an electric unicycle. Here, we're gonna choose an e-skate. You can also choose to override this if you're an advanced user, but for us, the default settings are good. So we go next. We're gonna do a medium outrunner because that matches the size of these motors. It has some motor size detection, but there's some preset parameters depending on what size motor you're using. So we'll go with a medium outrunner one and we'll leave these default settings down here. So let's go next and then it says don't choose too big of a motor so we say yes we understand that now we're going to choose our battery type we have um, 10 series cells this is for the voltage cutoffs in the battery and the battery capacity measurement is to set um, the range estimation algorithm so you can see that uh, here you can say okay 8.4 is good for me you can override some of these settings but we're going to leave them as is now we hit next and now it's going to say you didn't specify battery current limits, but that's okay because we're using the motor current limits and it has an explanation there. This is not our pulley ratio, but we're just going to leave it like that for the sake of the video. Um, and this is kind of like your motor parameters that you would input for the board. And now you can say detect all motors over can. And now it's going to start the detection process, which you will hear because it does some motor detection. Now it's going to spin the motors up to detect the flux linkage. Okay, so it finished detection, it gives you your detection result and kind of some of the parameters it detected, you hit OK. Now it's going to drop you into a menu that lists each of the motors so you can set the motor directions. You can see this direction's forward, this direction's forward, 
and then um, you can invert them here if you want. So say that one was going the wrong way, I could hit the invert button and that will go the opposite direction. That motor doesn't sound too good. Might need to do some maintenance on this guy. Uh, okay, so let's leave it like that and then we can hit finish and that will drop us back into the main menu and our motors will be all set up and good to go now. What's going on with this thing? Okay, so that was the motor wizard. Now we'll move on to the next button, which is the input wizard. So here you can go set up the input. It's going to scan for all the devices on the bus, and you can pick which um, device your remote's connected to. It's going to be this first one. Now this is going to drop us into a menu for um, a bunch of different type of remotes you can set up. For us, we have a PPM receiver, so we can hit next here. Um, then we would connect one of our remotes, toggle that forward and backward, and then it will kind of update the appropriate limits. We're just going to leave it like this for now. Here you can change a bunch of settings relevant to the remote. Um, but for the sake of brevity, I'm not going to go too much into all those settings, but they just are usually the default settings are all good and just work great. So we're just going to hit finish there. Cool. Next up we have controls. This is kind of for debugging purposes, not actually riding the skateboard. You would just use this for kind of making sure that everything's running well. So here I can hit um, set forward or whatever. It's a little bit low current, so it's not actually moving the motor. But actually what's happening is um, if we go back to, let's go like this in the app config, let's set the app to use to just UART. Um, basically the, it had the remote app running and the remote was overriding any command we would send because, um, it updates periodically. So if you didn't have a remote, then you could use this instead. And you can see there, then I can set the motors like that, which is nice. And I can also go here, scan the bus, and then I can switch motors for instance, and I can go into the controls and then I can do motor too. Cool. Um, okay, next up is we did the input wizard, we did the controls, and now we're going to go. This is the same menu that was from the um, the motor the motor wizard that we ran before. But if you just wanted to only toggle your motor directions or something, you can do so from here. Let's see, invert motor directions. Here is a backup and restore config. So say you've navigated all these menus and now you downloaded the new version of the app and you wanted to update your firmware. You could update the firmware, which would reset all the settings and then you can restore. Um, you can back up all your config settings so you don't have to run through all these wizards again. And then you can restore your configs here after updating the firmware, um, which is really convenient because obviously you can tell this could be a bit time consuming. Um, here is a pair BLE menu. This is using kind of a ad hoc, um, additional like naming and local pairing method, but, um, this just, you can go here and, um, select a name and then it will add a, a pairing. So now this is paired to this phone specifically and won't connect to other phones. This is the multi settings menu. So this is, um, if you want to change the settings of all of the motors on your vehicle at the same time, you can come in here and write different sets of settings. So let's say I wanted, uh, the current limits to be reduced. I could turn these down here and then I could go write limits to all VESCs and that will write to all of them. And, um, just kind of, it's just faster and more convenient. And so you have stuff for, um, various different parameters. Cool. Okay. Next up is the data logging. And so this is, um, this is what we need for the background modes. Um, for what this does is on your phone, it will log a record of all of the motor and battery parameters and also your current location. And then, um, at the end of the session, it will save a, a comma separated value file. And you can look at that in the PC tool to kind of review your ride. If you're having any issues with your vehicle, or if you just want to share with some friends or something. So here I can hit, um, enable RT data. That's going to tell you the file that it's writing to. This is written into the normal kind of, um, 
Apple shared files place. So now it's kind of logging data until I uncheck that box. Um, and it will also ask the first time you do this if, um, if for the location's permissions, obviously. Um, so we will stop logging now because that's good enough. Now we can also go here and this is um, the wireless bridge to computer. So sometimes there's certain things that only the computer tool does well and maybe we just want to connect to the computer. But if your computer doesn't have Bluetooth or oftentimes the Bluetooth chip inside the computer isn't as good as the Bluetooth chip in the phone, then you can instead do this and activate a TCP bridge. So it will take from the Bluetooth connection and it will port forward through TCP and then it's going to list your port here. And if your computer is on the same Wi-Fi network here, then you can just port forward like this. So you can see we're on 192.168.1.240. I have that up here and now I can connect to the computer. And if I go into real time data here and start pulling data, you can see that we um, are passing through data here, which is nice. Uh, I'm going to disconnect this. So that is the entire um, first page menu. On to the next page. This is the real-time data page. So this will show you things like your battery percent. It has an inclinometer, your motor temperatures, your current consumption of the board, expected range, how many miles your board has gone, how long the board's been running this session, the speeds, um, the currents and the powers, etc. So you can see if I do this wheel here it's going to change the speed and it also gives you a range estimate for how much distance is left the second page here if you swipe vertically this is an imu page so right now we're kind of in yaw lock because the board is vertical but if the board was laying flat you'd be able to see it tilting i just don't want to tilt this board over too much right now but you can see that those various numbers are updating Here's the ride summary page. This kind of gives you um, a bunch of statistics about your current ride and how much power you've consumed, etc. cetera, um, which is nice to have. And then there's also um, just kind of a more simple set of gauges here based on just the current motor, more used for debugging and, and things like this. So that's the RT data page. Now if we go over to profiles page, this um, just lets you basically set profiles say you have a newer rider that's going to use your board or you share the board with someone you can have different profiles that you switch between to give different powers and riding experiences so you can set a percentage of the total acceleration and braking force you can set power limits if you want to um, there and then you can also uh, set a maximum speed for the board just to make sure you know maybe your kid isn't going too fast or something and that does rely on having the correct pulley and wheel diameter set up. Um, here is the BMS page. So this summarizes all the data in your battery. So we can see every cell grouping voltage. I have 12 cells in this battery, or I have 18 cells in this battery. And um, you can see that all 18 of those have voltages listed and balancing. You can go down here and there is some different temperatures within the battery. Um, so you can monitor those, which is nice. You can also go here and there are some commands to start balancing the battery or to make it so nobody can charge the board or um, adjust some offsets and stuff. This is the firmware and bootloader page. So here you can go in here and see the change log for all of the previous firmware updates and what the current firmware is. The app is always packaged with the latest firmware. Each app is kind of built to work with a specific firmware, but is backwards compatible with the previous firmwares. But if a future firmware is loaded, the only thing it will allow you to do is to upload the firmware from this page. So I can click come here and I can click upload and it's gonna give you a warning about uploading the firmware. You hit okay. It's gonna erase the bootloader first, just to make sure that there's a bootloader on board. And then it's going to start uploading the firmware. This typically takes around two minutes. So I won't in this video allow the firmware upload to finish because I think um, for brevity's sake, it's, it's better. Then you can hit um, cancel here and that will stop the firmware upload. Here is if you want to use a custom file, you can do that. Um, but this is not a very common use case. This is if you only want to upload a bootloader. Again, these two pages are kind of more um, for developers and whatnot. On this page is the motor config page. So this actually summarizes 
there's probably over a hundred settings that you can customize for um, each motor. And so here you can navigate through all these various settings. Typically these pages are only used by developers that are tuning something and um, the wizards are, are primarily used. So the page is kind of buried um, further back. Uh, and same thing over here with the app config. We tried to kind of cover most of the stuff in the multi settings, but having these app and motor config pages allows people to really get into the weeds and the details. This is the terminal page. So this allows you just to come in here and uh, um, edit um, like direct terminal commands, which is also kind of for, uh, um, for developers. So I can print the threads from the motor controller and in the real time operating system. And I can see how much execution time they've been using um, and kind of really get into the weeds if I need to do that. So it is kind of, it has a lot of support for kind of this development type of stuff. And then I can hit clear to clear that. I can also print, um, oops, I can print also like the faults and you can also go and type, um, you know, help and send that not capitalized. And then um, that will show you all of the um, possible commands that you can send, which is numerous. Okay. Um, but that, I think that's pretty much all of the functionality in the app. So, um, yeah, thanks for, uh, checking this out and, um, I appreciate you guys reviewing the app. I hope, uh, let me know if you need any more information. Thanks. Okay. So there was also an ask just to demonstrate the background modes. Um, so if we open the app here and we connect to the skateboard, one thing that's a very common user scenario for this app is to create a data log for debugging purposes. So if we click here to start the real time data logging, it's going to log it to the local documents folder in the app. So you just hit okay here. Um, and now it's going to be creating a log and it's going to be taking GPS coordinates and you can see up here that it's using um, our location and you can lock the phone, put it in your pocket, go for a skate, gather some data. And then when you come back, you open up your app. It's still there logging as you can see. And then um, when you are done with that, then you just uncheck this and that saves the log. And now if we go in here to files, uh, you can see that we have a fresh log here at 1113. So then I can go like this and I can go share and I'll just airdrop it to my Mac right now. That downloads there. I can go into the full desktop tool to analyze this log. Here is that one from today at 11.13 a.m. I can load that and then we can see there's my house. And as I zoom in, there's a bunch of different data points gathered and I can look at different things here to see, for instance, how many amp hours were used, the speed. This was the, the yaw of the board. We can look at the various temperatures and watt hours and stuff. This is the temperature of the PCB we can see during the whole time at each point, it was 24 degrees or something. Um, so eventually this is functionality that we'll want to build into the app, but for now, at least it's supported in the desktop tool and you can take logs while you're on the go and analyze them at the end. Um, yeah, so thanks.